Hey guys, so why is it so tough for endurance athletes to maintain muscle mass and put muscle on? Because I hear this a lot in clinic and I've seen this as well, that you'll get an endurance athlete or somebody who's new to the sport and they come in and they say, hey, hey, my arm muscles have disappeared or my legs are so skinny, I'm shrinking and not in a good way. Okay, I see this quite a bit and there's a lot of nuance to this, but of course I'm going to tell you about a major reason why this happens in endurance athletes in this video. But of course we're smaller people, we're leaner people. You don't see a whole lot of 280, 290 pound ultra runners out there or Ironman athletes. It's just that, you know, we're the type of the body type that is attracted to the sport. So there's that. Obviously, we don't do as much strength training as the next athlete does. Uh, when we do it, you know, we're tired, right? We probably don't do as good of a job at the strength training as the next athlete does. And of course, there's the we may be genetically disadvantaged at putting on muscle mass, right? All those things do matter. But. I also do believe that there is a major underlying physiological conflict with endurance training and our ability to put on muscle mass. And so what is that reason? That reason is chronically elevated cortisol levels. Now, hold on before you roll your eyes about another video about cortisol. This is important for you to know this because aside from all the endurance training, there is a cruel trick that Mother Nature plays on all of us. And that is we lose our muscle mass with time, you know, with aging. And when you lose that muscle mass, it's very, very hard to put it back on. So I'm passionate about this subject because I want you all to be able to put on some appreciable amount of muscle mass, which you all should be able to. Any healthy individual should be able to put that muscle mass on. So I want you to be able to do this because it's going to be better for your health, better for your performance, better for your overall well-being. So how does that cause this problem? Well, if you think about, we all know that cortisol is a stress hormone, right? and it's a catabolic hormone so that means it breaks things down now if you think back to our ancestors when they encountered a stressor you know getting chased by the tiger or you know getting in a fight with the, the warring tribe next door or maybe they didn't have a meal for a few days they needed the energy right they needed to have quick energy and they needed to be able to think where does that energy come from if you haven't eaten in a week well it comes from cortisol which has a nice little effect of stripping those amino acids out of your skeletal muscle transporting them to the liver and reassembling them as sugar, right? So making blood sugar so that you have an immediate source of energy and so you can think and fight and, you know, get yourself out of that problem. Otherwise, none of us would be here today, right? So that's what happens is that cortisol is catabolic. Uh, it breaks the muscle tissue down in favor of producing readily available energy so that you can survive. Now, if you think back a thousand years ago, those stressors were relatively short-lived, right? The fight didn't go on for weeks and months the chase from the tiger didn't go on that long. The famine didn't go on that long, right? Again, or else we wouldn't be here. Think about today's stressors. What is your stress level like? You have stress every day at work, you have relationship stresses, and you're an endurance athlete, so you train all the time. You train, how long does it take you to train for an event? Not a couple hours, right? It takes you weeks and months and months and months. So you think about our cortisol levels are chronically elevated to some extent. And this is why it is so tough for us to gain muscles because we've always got this slight little catabolic push where we're kind of stripping that muscle mass away and it shifts us more away from that anabolic push where that's you know muscle building because of the nature of our sport and the nature of our training. So how do you fix this stuff, right? Well, I'm going to tell you about three different ways that you can mitigate this so that you can put on that muscle mass. So how are we going to fix this? All right, I'm going to tell you about three different ways that you can fix your inability to put on muscle mass so you can put some more on and be healthier. So the first one starts with your off-season training. I want you to be in the gym acting like you are a bodybuilder, lifting very heavy weights, lower rep to failure. Okay, so that type of training is obviously going to put a greater physiological input towards muscle mass building than the way most endurance athletes have been taught to do strength training, which is lower weight, higher rep to get stronger. So if you do that in the off season, you're going to put on some appreciable muscle. And if you'll do me a favor during the race season and still do just a little bit of strength training, you're gonna hold on to that through the race season. And then you'll be able to cycle around the next year and maintain that muscle mass year round, okay? So that's the first one. Second one is protein, all right? So endurance athletes tend to have cleaner diets, more restrictive diets than maybe the next athlete who's looking to kind of eat anything and everything, right? And so one thing that falls off in a lot of endurance athletes is protein. At least I see this clinically in my practice. Now, the kind of standard recommendations of protein intake for endurance athletes is anywhere from 1.2 grams uh, per kilogram of protein per body weight, all the way up to two grams per kilogram of body weight per day. Now, 
let's do some math here. So I'm 165 pounds, which means I weigh 75 kilograms. If I do the 1.2 grams per kilogram body weight of protein a day, that means I'm going to be eating about 90 grams of protein throughout the day. And then if I go up to that two, that equates to that two grams per kilogram of body weight. That means I'll be eating 150 grams of protein a day, which I'd say good luck. That's a ton of protein. I think the sweet spot is someplace in the middle. Now, a couple things that protein needs to be eaten throughout the day. It'll serve you better that way rather than just one giant bolus in the morning smoothie, let's say. Now, and then the other thing, of course, we need to have those branch chain amino acids, valine, leucine, and isoleucine in that protein. Those are, of course, the prime drivers of muscle protein synthesis. And even more so in the research these days, leucine is even being pointed to as even more important than the other ones. Now, you can get the branch chain aminos in animal protein. If you're a vegan or vegetarian, you can get them in legumes, soy, you know, other beans, nuts, and seeds. So it's readily available throughout our diets. Make sure you're getting the branch chain aminos. Make sure you bump up your protein, okay? Third order of business are supplements, okay? So I just talked about branch chain aminos. I supplement with them too, in addition to my diet, because I just want to make sure I'm getting enough in and filling in all the bases or if I'm missing anything like that. So I'll supplement with some branch chain aminos in the morning and at night when I'm in a heavy strength training cycle. And I feel like that also helps my recovery, by the way, less sore. Works well for me. So check out some branch chain amino acids. Second one is something that will lower your cortisol. So we like the cortisol recovery because what it does is it kind of short circuits how much cortisol your body's actually making. You don't need to worry about flatlining on the cortisol. It won't do that to you, but it'll definitely lower it down to an appreciable level. So again, remember, we want to keep that cortisol as low as we can while, of course, maintaining our lifestyle with all that training we like to do. Now, I like to take this at bedtime. It has a nice side effect of making sure you have sweet dreams, and nice, deep, restorative sleep. So check out the cortisol recovery to bring your cortisol down at nighttime. And then the third supplement is creatine. Okay, so creatine is not just for bodybuilders. It's for endurance athletes, too. It's been studied. It's been on the market, I think, for like 25 years. It's very well studied. It's very safe. It's okay to use it kind of around the clock. You don't need to cycle on and off of it like we used to tell people to do. So you can take your creatine. Add, I would add that to your regimen if you're an endurance athlete looking to put some muscle on. It works very, very well. Only if you're doing that strength training, though. And then the other thing is that you need to take it with something sweet. It is better absorbed with a high glycemic food, so you can put it in a little bit of juice and get it down that way. So check out the branch chain amino acids, cortisol recovery, get some creatine in there, bump up your training to do higher strength training, and you are going to find that you put on some good muscle mass. It's not going to happen overnight. It's, of course, going to happen with some work, but I think you'll be very satisfied with those results. So I hope this all helped you guys all out. Of course, if you enjoyed the video, please give us a like. And of course, please share it with any of your endurance buddies who maybe are looking a little scrawny. Okay, it'll help them put some muscle on. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe too.